What's going on? This is the Ask a Swim Pro Show. My name is Ferris Sabetti and I'm here with co-founder of My Swim Pro, Mike Lalonde. How's it going? It's going great. Glad to be here. So we're going to be talking about your incredible 100 pound weight loss journey, how you did it through nutrition, swimming, uh, working out, and just living a more balanced life. So let's get right into it. First things first, how much weight did you lose? Well, so I lost 100 pounds right now. Oh my God, uh, 100 pounds. Yeah, I was weighing about 264 pounds at the end of last year. And wow. since then, I'm now down to about 164 pounds. So in 12 months, you've lost 100 pounds going from about 265 to 165. Uh, you look great. <laughs> look at this, we need like a full body pan of this, <laughs> this is amazing. Um, so let's, let's go right into it. So what were, I guess, if you could break it into the main things that you think contributed to you know, first of all, you have to be motivated, but also like what, you know, how did you go about doing that? Yeah, so I would say the main thing is you definitely need to want to start. The hardest thing is to get started. Mm. Once you get started, you kind of get the ball rolling and everything just flows from there. So a lot of people look at different diet plans out there and there's lots of inf misinformation out mm. there online and through ads and whatnot, but it really, breaks down to one simple equation, which is calories in and calories out. So the calories that you consume need to be less than the cal or less than the calories yes. that you expend. So basically, if you're consuming, let's say, 2,000 calories a day and you're expending uh, 2,500 calories a day, then you're going to have a cal caloric deficit of about 500 calories. And when you get that deficit, you're going to lose some weight. And you have to do it consistently over time, right? Because it's, I mean, I think everyone's, if they've tried to lose weight, it's not too hard to lose a few pounds, but then, you know, you lost a hundred. Yeah. So obviously it's every day, week after week, you were, so you're in a caloric deficit. So how did you make that deficit? Were you just, do you just completely stop eating? You know, you didn't starve yourself, you're <laughs> exercising. No. So there's two, two ways to create this caloric deficit. One is, through uh, diet and the other ones through exercise and obviously you probably want to do a combination of the two double up so mm -hmm. with the diet um, I didn't do anything fancy no low carb no, nothing like that but something like that might work for you what I did was simple calorie counting and meal preparation so meal prep. every week I would on Sunday I would plan out my meals I would go out and buy the groceries make all the meals for basically half a week and then on Wednesday I'd do the next half of the week. So I knew exactly how many calories I was consuming every single day. And then combine that with exercise. So I started swimming with my swim pro of course uh, four to five times a week and those calories that you burn through swimming, which is a lot, um, also contribute to the caloric deficit. So swimming is so good for you because it, it burns a lot of calories. Like how much swimming were you doing? Like what was like? Give it, walk us through a workout plan. Like what were you doing? Yeah, so uh, I dropped a ton of time in my swimming. Also doing this, but uh, I'm doing the My Swim Pro training plans. I started with the uh, Get Fit training plan, which took me um, uh, from you know kind of beginner freestyle workouts of under a thousand to at the end I think doing a one thousand in a row or twelve hundred in a row. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Yeah. Fifteen hundred continuously. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, from there, I moved up to uh, doing the improved uh, endurance and improved speed training plans. And right now I'm doing the Get Fit I Am training plan to work on my different strokes. Um, but so for, for each of these- people who aren't familiar with the training plan, maybe you walk them through like, what is a training plan? Yeah, so the way a training plan works is it's gonna be customized to you uh, based on how fast you can swim and how long you wanna swim and all sorts of different information that we gather in the My Swim Pro app. And every week it's gonna give you three, two, three or four um, uh, workouts to complete depending on which training plan you select. And each workout is gonna be like maybe 1,500 yards or meters to 3,000 yards or meters. So 30, 40 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. always under an hour. Mm -hmm. Do you have any workout, do you ever swim a workout that's over 60 minutes? Oh man, it's pretty rare. I, yeah. I think it's pretty so, rare that I do that. So you're swimming just so you know people paying attention can can follow along. So you're swimming three, four, five times per week, mm -hmm. under 60 minutes per swim workout. Yeah. What, what was the average time of the workout? 
Uh, probably like 45 minutes average. 45 minutes. Yeah. So you are you are getting your caloric deficit through exercise and meal preparation, mm -hmm. and then I guess what did, did you expect to lose all that weight, or were you motivated to get to that number? I mean, how did you go about thinking about that goal? Yeah. So I guess I didn't expect it to go so smoothly. The one thing that I've learned is like it's super simple the, the the weight loss equation and how to do it it's not easy but it's very simple and mm. as long as you can be consistent with it um that's the best thing you can do so now there are occasions where you eat you know more than cheat days yeah cheat days, <laughs> cheat days. like i was initially i was going at 1800 calories a day and then i dropped it down to 15 1600 calories you really shouldn't go below that for guys and you shouldn't go below 1200 calories a day for uh but for consult women. a nutritionist and a doctor don't you know definitely don't, be, don't before you do anything crazy here <laughs> but yeah I, I didn't expect it to go so smoothly um you know i'm just keeping track and if things uh get off if you have a cheat day or if you eat too much or don't exercise a couple days a week it's fine you mm. can always get back on the horse so i think the biggest what i from my perspective seeing you go through this transformation is you were so consistent. So it's not just, you didn't do it for like three weeks and you lost like 10 pounds yeah. and then you just didn't, you plateaued. Like you were consistent every single week with your uh, meal preparation and your swimming. So because this is the Ask a Swim Pro show, let's talk about your swimming. So you've improved a lot, not just losing weight, but you've, you've gotten faster. What would you say is, what helped the most in improving your actual swimming uh, performance? Yeah. Um. Well, I guess the first thing would be just going out and swimming every single day. You get a feel for the water. Mm. Um, you know, what is the feel of the water? A lot of people don't know what that means. Like, how would you describe that to someone who doesn't swim regularly? Well, first of all, if you don't swim regularly, if you're not into swimming, getting in the water feels great. Yeah, step <laughs> one, one, get a pool. Yes. <laughs> um, and two, it's just, uh, I would describe it as, you know, like, when you first start out, you might be kind of clunky. You don't know the angles your arm should enter. You don't know uh, how it's going to feel to pull the water, uh, how big your kick should be. And once you kind of start doing this more frequently, mm. you get a feel for it. I, I, oh, that's I how it. I would yeah, describe yeah, yeah. it. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, uh, sorry, uh, number two is um, I would look at, to improve your strokes and, and your uh, technique, look at the... Uh, my swim pro training plans and videos mm. which are going to give you different drills to do and that helps a ton and you can see kind of step by yeah. step how you're supposed to do the different strokes so i think one thing that a lot of people should know is you didn't grow up as a competitive swimmer mm -hmm. so this is like my background as a collegiate swimmer it's it makes a lot of sense to do structured workouts but for you you know you you just got into swimming as an adult so what was it like to go from not knowing very much about swimming and now I would consider you like an expert because you know, you know what's supposed to be done. Your warm up, you know, how you do sets, how you structure all that. So what was it like going from that to pro? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think when I first started, because I was technically obese, um, it was difficult to go to the pool and, you know, you have body image issues. And, but I would just say just go in there and start mm -hmm. swimming. A um, couple things I didn't know how to do were a flip turn. Um, but you didn't need to know how to do it right in the beginning. Sure. Like, you yeah. know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't know. You don't need to know how to do a flip turn. It can be intimidating when you see everyone else go to the pool and it looks like they know what they're doing. Yeah, but they and don't really know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Most people don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so you can go in and just swim some laps and and get used to it, and then you know, uh, use the workouts and training plans to yeah. improve as you go. And, and one thing, so a lot of people also don't know, is you started competing in meets. Mm -hmm. So you never competed in a competition before, and yeah. you started doing Masters meets. So if you don't know what Masters swimming is, it's basically anyone who's over the age of 18, it's organized workouts and competition for adults. So you know you, you swim on your own yeah. most of the time. Right. But then when you go to a competition, you're swimming against other people in your age group, and you can swim anything from a 50 freestyle to 100 freestyle all the way up to a 1500 meter freestyle. And you, uh, Michael, got involved in these different competitions. So talk, walk us through going into your first swimming meet, and then what we just, you know, last what the last year has been like competing. Yeah. So I think I did my first meet maybe in February. Was it February? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was half a year ago. Yeah, half a year half ago. Half a year ago. So it was 
again, it was a little intimidating because I didn't really know what to expect, but you yeah. know, you just kind of go and everyone's super chill. If you haven't done a uh, master's meet, I'd recommend it or Very whatever chill. meet you can find in your area. Um, you know, I had to uh, learn how to do the dive. That's one thing. <laughs> um, but you don't even need to know how to do a dive. That's yeah. the other thing about master swimming that's so cool is it doesn't matter how fast you are. You're not, no one's, you know, some people are trying to break records, but there's such a range of talent. So some people can't do flip turns. Some people can't dive. It's a whole mix bag. And you were kind of in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah. And I think the first event, what was it? A uh, 100, 100 free, 200 free? I, I dropped a significant amount of time since then. So I did my first meet in February. I did another meet um, in Indianapolis at uh, US Masters Nationals. And then the latest one that we went to was in um, uh, Pan Ams in Florida, in Orlando, Florida. And that was really great. Um, I did the 50 free, 100 free, and the 50 fly, which I'm just learning how to do fly. Okay, we need to talk about this 50 butterfly. So the, the strokes, so you started pretty much all freestyle. Yeah. Right? So you could, could you, would you consider you could do breaststroke or butterfly or backstroke in the beginning when you started? No. Right. So I think that's awesome. The fact that you went from, you started just with freestyle. So, you know, you could put your face in the water, you could side breathe a little bit mm -hmm. and then that improved, but then you started doing other strokes. What was it like going from freestyle to all of the other strokes? You know, like what, I guess what was hard about that? Yeah. So freestyle is definitely still my strongest because I've just done so much freestyle. I'm mm -hmm. so used to it. Um, I'd say the hardest one for me still is the breaststroke mm -hmm. because my kick, that kick is not great. Um, but uh, the butterfly, um, I, I guess it's been, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's been that difficult to learn. I'm still learning. I still don't have, you know, exactly correct technique, but it's enough that I could go ahead and do the 50 fly. It's just a 50, you know. I mean, in the 50 butterfly, Michael went from a drowning camel <laughs> to swimming the 50 fly at Pan Ams and beating people in his heat. Yeah. <laughs> you were 30, under 40 seconds, 39 in a 50 meter long course butterfly, which is insane uh, to go from not being able to swim it to actually going at 39. And I think you'll still just keep getting faster at that. So what, what and also for more numbers context, so like what, how fast was your 100 freestyle when you just started, like how long did it take you to do 100 meters when you first started swimming? That is a good question. I'm pretty sure it was upper 150s. Like if you're going all 50s. out, like you're sprinting. Ma maybe, maybe a little bit faster than that. I, I don't yeah. remember exactly how fast I was doing it. It wasn't that fast. So <laughs> like a minute 50, Yeah. one minute 50 seconds yeah. for 100 meters. So per 50, yeah. just under a minute. And now would you go in the 50 freestyle at Pan Ams? In the 50 freestyle? In the 50 free. Um, 32? 33, 33, 32. 33? 33 yeah, yeah. Yeah. So 33 long course, yeah. which is like a 29 in short course yards, if you guys are following along uh, in the US. So you went from close to a minute to less than 30 seconds, basically. So you basically are twice as fast yeah. in the course of like six months to eight months. That's pretty insane. Yeah. What advice do you have for people who maybe they don't want to compete because you don't have to compete, but I guess maybe they're thinking about competing but they're intimidated to do a master's competition yeah uh, so I guess I was in the same boat I was a little bit intimidated but having done it um, just sign up for it everyone is super chill um, you can I, I would say if you have some time before the, the meet that you're gonna go do uh, try some different workouts and training plans through my swim pro or however you want to do it um, and just go ahead and do it. Get out there and have fun. No one's gonna judge you for swimming slow. No one's gonna judge you for anything. Everyone's gonna have a great time. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think the coolest thing about Masters is the diversity of people's goals who go to it. So you might go to a competition and there, there are people who are trying to break records. And then there's other people who are swimming in their first competition like Michael was not that long ago. And at the end of the day, whether you're swimming in your first meet or you're trying to break records, the underlying goal is for lifelong health and fitness. So even though it may seem intimidating because people are, try are they worry about their times, at the end of the day, it's a really relaxed atmosphere and everyone's there for the same reason, trying to live and lead a happy uh, lifestyle and healthy lifestyle through the sport of swimming, which I think is so cool. What advice do you have for people who, they're not interested in meets, 
they don't really care for doing a competition, but they just, they want to get either better at swimming, maybe they're trying to lose some weight. How do you advise them? Because they're not, they never want to do a meet. They just want to swim on their own. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'd say if you're swimming on your own, it can get a little bit uh, boring to just go back and forth and doing yeah. laps. So you'll want to have a structured workout. Um, you don't want to just go back and forth. So if you have a structured workout, it's going to give you some uh, differentiation in what you're doing. So maybe like you'll do uh, 450s freestyle and then some backstroke and then a kick set. Um, it just changes things up and it helps you to improve along the way as well. Yeah, and I'll also add when you do structured workouts, because you're swimming uh, shorter segments, so instead of doing 500 meters straight, if you do 10 by 50, so you break it up into 50 meters at a time, it allows you to swim at a, at a better technique slightly faster than you would if you were to just go 500 continuous. And so over time, when you train your body to swim faster in those shorter durations, it actually makes you a better swimmer and it improves your feel of the water. So we definitely recommend you check out structured workouts. Um, I, want, I want to pick your brain a little bit on the workouts concept. So what are your favorite kinds of workouts? Uh, let's see, my favorite kinds of workouts. Is it stroke, is it sprint, is it distance? Do you like 25s, longer stuff? Um, you know, I, I'd say, I'd, I keep it a little bit on the shorter side. I don't want to do like a... 500? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what's shorter, uh, like 50s, 100s, 25s? Yeah, maybe 50s and 100s is good. 50s and 100s. Because that'll, um, you know, kind of break up the monotony and it'll help me to uh, work on my speed, um, which I still need work on, but... <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay, so one thing that I remember you were asking me when you were beginning this process is your kicking. Yes. Because you, you said, why am I kicking so slow? And you actually have a pretty good kicking technique, I would say, relative to other beginner swimmers. So what, what did I tell you at the time, and how have you improved your technique in kicking and thoughts okay. about that? Yeah, so I think one of the things that you mentioned was, for freestyle in particular, yeah. it's a lot about upper body. So if you are just able to kick enough to kind of keep your legs up <laughs> at the at the back back end and so that it almost feels like you're swimming downhill yep. then you're gonna improve yep. and i think the other thing you told me was don't make your uh kick too big you yep. keep your amplitude a little bit smaller because you don't want to uh increase the drag from the water yeah so those are two things i've been small kick small kick yeah. and but but also you know like a lot of people kick really slow mm -hmm. relative to maybe a more experienced swimmer or how fast you can actually swim. So if you can swim 50 meters in 60 seconds, your kicking time, if you had a kickboard or in, even in streamline, might be way slower. I guess, what, <laughs> what advice do you have for people who are like, why am I so slow at kicking? Yeah, yeah, streamline is, is super important. Um, one thing I've been doing for my kicking to keep in streamline is instead of uh, with a kickboard, I've been doing streamline on my back. Yeah. So, you know, your hands above your head like this yep. and put some flippers on uh, and just go for it. Okay, you mentioned fins. So, fins. equipment, yeah, 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 fins, flippers, whatever. So, <laughs> fins, equipment, what, do you need equipment to, to swim? Like, oh, I don't have any of that stuff. What do I need to swim? Um, I mean, it, it helps. You don't, you don't need it. A lot of um, mm. the you pools. Don't need have, swimsuit. Uh, you need a swimsuit. Yeah. Wear a swimsuit. Yeah. The the pool will have a kickboard if you want to use that, and it also pull pull buoys, which you'll you know you stick between your legs and yeah. work on your uh, on your uh, pull instead. Yeah. But you don't. I guess more or less. Sorry, you don't need equipment to get mm -hmm. started. You just need yeah. a swimsuit. Goggles are nice to have. Yes. Swim cap. Do you need a swim cap? I don't usually use a. You swim don't need cap. a swim cap. It's again. It's it's a nice to have. Like swimsuit is the only thing that's required and a pool. And then I also say with fins, fins are a really good tool to help your kicking. So if you feel like you're not going anywhere and you have in the workout prescribed to do 650s kick, if you throw the fins on, you know, it allows you to, to do the 650s kick maybe on a minute and 20 second interval. And if you didn't have the fins, maybe it'd take you two minutes. And so it allows you to not only move faster, but it teaches you how to move faster through the water so that eventually you can take the fins off and you can swim faster and kick faster without any equipment at all. So I always recommend fins for beginner swimmers. If, I'd say that's like, if you had one piece of equipment that you had to go and buy, 
it would be a pair of fins. The short fins, the fins that are not, not like super long flippers or like a mono fin, like a mermaid or a merman. <laughs> the short fins, maybe one to two inches bigger than your foot, just to give you a little bit of a boost so you can feel what it's like to have that added propulsion. Um, and anything else is sort of just extra, like, you know, paddles, a snorkel, a pull buoy, the thing you put between your legs, a float. Like those are nice to have, but you definitely don't need them to get started. I guess for you, Mike, what are you looking forward to? Like what's next? Are you, I mean, are you trying to keep swimming faster? Are you trying to like build muscle, compete? What are you, what's your goals? Yeah, so I don't have a meet lined up just yet. Uh, maybe in the future I'll, I'll get something, definitely in the future I'll get something mm -hmm. lined up with that. Uh, but right now I'm focusing on my uh, IM training plan that I'm doing through my swim pro. Mm -hmm. Um, and then since I've hit this 100 pound uh, weight loss mark, uh, I'm gonna start hitting the gym a bit and uh, getting some weightlifting in. And hopefully getting that'll ripped. also improve my speed and everything like that. So uh, we, t we didn't really talk about dry land activities. So, um, you know, would you say dry land has helped you? Like, have you done any dry land, like push up stuff? I yeah. mean, what have you done? So. I've been using an app that's called uh, Runtastic Results. If you can uh, check, it out. check it out on the App Store or Google Play Store. Uh, basically, it's nothing too heavy lifting. It's all body weight uh, fitness. So push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks, burpees, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Yep. Uh, and I've been doing that about three times a week. Um, how long is that? How long, how long are these uh, workouts? 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so like less that. than half an hour. Yeah. And that's helping you with the calorie expenditure. Yeah, uh, I'd say a little bit on that end, and also um, just so that I'm maintaining my and even growing uh, my muscle as I lose weight. Yeah, that's good. And I think for anyone, any beginner swimmer, you know, or beginner in any kind of fitness program, uh, it's always good to do things in moderation. So you wouldn't want to go to like the gym if you've never been to the gym and start like moving weights around. Always talk with a coach or someone who knows what they're doing in that specific sport. So if you want to pick up like any kind of sport really like always start out with someone who knows what they're doing and start out in moderation like mike was only doing 20 minute workouts he wasn't going to the gym and doing curls for 30 minutes right you know <laughs> continuously right so it's like body weight push-ups jumping jacks things that you don't need any equipment at all that you can do in like your basement at home mm. things really easy to get started um with when it comes to getting started you know what is if you could really concisely advice to someone who they've been on the fence about their fitness goals mm. and they need they need a push so I need Mike the motivator <laughs> to come out and be like go do something yeah so for losing weight or for fitness in general I'd say if you're on the fence about starting it just start it now like for a, such a long time I myself was saying ah, I'm gonna put that off I'm gonna you know maybe tomorrow or maybe next week I'll start but then those next week next week next week kind of add up and yeah you don't need to wait years. until January 1st right don't wait until January 1st yeah and then the second thing is you don't have to start huge you can start super small um, whatever your goal is it's good to have a plan um, but the plan doesn't have to be like you're just going hard at it immediately you can start with a small change maybe you're gonna swim twice a week maybe you're gonna cut out sugar from your diet you, you can start super start small, small but stay consistent Consistent. I think that's that's mm -hmm. huge. Um, what else? Oh, so so you get started. Now you you're a, a use case of like this is this is the success story. It's right <laughs> here. How do you feel? Feels really good. I would recommend everyone go gain a hundred pounds and then lose it. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it feels amazing. Um, hundred pounds. Yeah. So like, how do you, I mean, describe the feeling, right? Because that's ultimately what you're going for. It's not yeah. just. I mean, yeah, you're gonna look better, but like. How do you feel? You no, know, this, yeah. You, you feel good, light. Yeah. I mean, do you feel lighter. I, I, I mean, feel lighter. I feel faster in the water. And there's a lot of small things. It's kind of hard to cover everything, but there's lots of small things that you'll notice uh, if you've lost a lot of weight. That like when you were bigger. Um, like what? Yeah. Uh, I guess. Well, on the negative side, when I sit down, my. <laughs> My uh, butt bone hurts more because there's less padding. Yeah, uh, on the do with squats. <laughs> yeah, on the positive side, it's um, I can fit in a lot of different spaces. Uh, it's easier getting up and moving around and uh, getting out of the car, going, you know, 
it, it's just easier movement in general. So you have way more mobility. Yeah. You feel better. You feel lighter. Do you have more energy? I have more energy. Yeah. You have more energy. Sure. You're swimming faster in the water. The clothes are slim fit on you now. You're rocking the slim fit. Yeah. You I'm look better. Size 30 jeans from size 44. So what? 44 to 30. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. We should put that in the headline somewhere. <laughs> from size 44 to 30 jeans, and you're you're about 5'10 ish. Yeah. Yeah. So like this for context, people watching. So yeah. 5'10 going from 44 to 30, from 265 to 165. That's 100 pounds, or about 45 kilos. Yeah. I don't, yeah, <laughs> you guys can do the math. Something, 40 something kilos, uh, incredible story. Michael, Mike Alon, co-founder of My Swim Pro, did it through nutrition, through- Exercise. Exercise, <laughs> swimming. Yes. Um, so I think you can do it too. And so if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, shout out to Mike for joining us on this episode of Ask a Swim Pro Show. We will catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.